Hey Lance Egan here with Fly Fish Food. I want to show you Bionic Ant version 2.0. This is the newest, latest version that we've all been fishing for a while. I think you'll like the upgrades. Alright, let's tie this fly. This is the Bionic Ant version 2.0. There isn't very much different on this. Just a couple of things you'll see here. I've got a size 12 Tiemco 100 hook in the vise. I've got some ADOT Semperfly black thread. I'm going to just start the thread on the hook. You can start it right at the eye if you like, for just to save time. I'm going to end up with thread there, but I don't necessarily need it to start there. I need it in the center, so I'm going to start with it in the center. I'm going to tie on a Wapsi ant body. This is the black with the white top and their XL size. Looks something like this. And what I'm going to do is actually move back up here to the front and measure that off so that I've got just a little bit more of the black extending up beyond the eye of the hook because when I tie it in it's going to pull up to where it looks a little shorter than when I just lay it on top there. And then I'm going to spiral wrap and compress the foam back down the hook to make a pretty good sized segment. Then I'm just going to use the thread to cover up the foam, make a nice base, make sure the foam is lashed down tight, like so. Now we've got the back end of our fly and the front end of our fly. All right, next up, I'm going to add the wing. This is EP Trigger Point. I don't have my packaging anymore, but it just comes in a hank strand like that. It's This is just white. Uh, this is one of the key parts of this fly. The old fly used to have a brown wing that was a little more imitative to uh, what ants often have, kind of a more gray-brown wing. But we find that the white wing is a heck of a lot easier to see, and the fish just don't care whether it's white or brown. So we've been tying almost all of our ants for years now for our personal use with white because they're just so much easier to see. All right, so we've got... EP trigger point in white as the wing. You saw that I doubled it over. That way you can pull on it all you like and it's not coming out. Then I'm just going to grab it and try and trim these up to a little bit longer than the body, but not terribly long. Next we're going to add the legs. The legs are uniflex. This one's in black. We also tie these uh, Bionic Ant 2.0s in purple and in brown or kind of a cinnamon color. So we changed the body color and the leg color and all that too, but the black one is still the staple. Purple has its days though. You got to have the purple one in your box. I'm going to tie these legs in in just an X shape. So I've captured it on that side. Now let's do it on the camera side. Like so. Trimming them to length. And the last step is to add the hackle. This is a Coachman Brown hackle. Really any brown would work, but Coachman Brown happens to be my favorite color, my confidence color on this fly. So I've trimmed the butts, see if you can see that, away from, there you go, away from the stem. And I'm going to tie the hackle in by just capturing the stem with a thread. And then one thing I'm going to do on this one to give just a little bit better base, is I'm going to take some black Kapok dubbing from Semperfly. Kapok is a high floating dubbing and it's, it's, it's really, really fine. Um, it doesn't build up a lot of bulk. But what I'm going to do is use it to kind of level out my tying area for my hackle. So where I've got this bump from the wing, I'm going to kind of cover that up also gives the hackle something to bite into so it doesn't slide around on the thread. Now we're going to wrap the hackle just in the segments from the legs. One, two, oops, three, four. I'm going to capture it with the thread. Come on, you bugger. There he goes. Capture the hackle with the thread, then I'm going to move the thread right up to the eye. 
keeping that tension. Now I can cut the hackle, come in here and whip finish, right behind the eye. And the last step after trimming my thread is that I want to trim this hackle flat on the bottom. So we get a pretty neat leg profile from that uniflex, but to make it so that this fly always lands with the hook down and so that it rides a little bit lower, I oftentimes kind of stroke those hackle fibers to each side and then come through here with the scissors, careful not to cut your legs, and just cut this hackle nice and flat right on the bottom. Like so. Got just a couple more on this side that are still a little bit sticking up. That's looking better. And we end up with the Bionic Ant 2.0. High vis. It's got the white wing. It's got a little bit larger legs for a better profile. Give that one a whirl. I think you're going to catch a fish. The baby fat minnow. You've all seen it. We're going to show you a new colorway that's dark and it just absolutely crushes fish. So check it out. Okay, so on this black baby fat minnow, it's a, it's a coloration that we were actually watching a video on YouTube and there's some guys in uh, Scandinavia somewhere. I forget where they are. But they were using a belly scratcher minnow with this black coloration with orange eyes. So we modified that for the baby fat minnow and it's a killer. So check it out. It's the same tie as the normal baby fat minnow, just in these new colors. First thing you need to do is subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it and it helps us to continue to make these videos. All right, so I'm gonna get started by just adding some thread right, right in front of the bead. And we're gonna kinda trap this bead about right here, just by crisscrossing over the top of it a few times. At the end of the day, I'm using an eighth, eighth inch or three mil eye, and that needs to be able to sit uh, between the bead and the eye of the hook. So there's enough gap there. So this fly is pretty simple. For the back or for the tail of the fly, the movement, I'm just gonna pick a nice piece of marabou that has flowy tips like this. And I'm just gonna pull a clump off the stem about like that much. You don't want this fly to be too full. If you use too many materials, it's just not gonna swim right. So I'll tie it in about right there. Just about like that. Get rid of the excess. And then for the guts on this one, we're using a cool color. It's called Ice Dub Minnow, Minnow Pearl Back. And it's kind of like a grayish color. It just has a bunch of flash in there. So the first batch of this that we're gonna tie in we're just going to dub some on our thread to cover up the marabou that we just tied in. Just like that. can kind of be messy a little bit. And then the next little bit, we're going to tie in by just grabbing a loose clump like this. And we'll tie it in right behind that bead clump style. Just like that and then brush all of these fibers back. And then advance your thread to the front. At this point, you can take a little piece of Velcro or a comb or something and give your flash a little brush out. Now I'm just gonna pick some black bruiser blend. It could be like black with copper, it could be black and red, it could be anything really, but it, this is Bruiser Blend Junior. I've got a clump about that big. So I'm going to preen these fibers so they're all kind of facing the same direction. It's critical not to use too much of this stuff. If you use too much of it, you kind of lose the integrity of the minnow head and then you have too bulky of a fly. It's not going to ride right in the water stuff like that. So before I tie this in, I'm going to advance my thread all the way to the eye of the hook and I'm going to tie it in. So most of that is going over the front of the fly, just like that. So I'll just repeat that process on the bottom of the fly. Just 
So just like that. So once we have those two portions tied in, I'm going to kind of fan them out. So if I turn this this way, you'll see how I have that nice and fanned out. And what that does is when I push that over the, the fly, it covers the sides of the head. I mean, we can fix that later, but it's easier just to do it this way at first. So I'm going to do that to the bottom as well. I'm going to pull the top over and give it a quick wrap of thread. And then the bottom I'll pull that under and just wrap my thread right here on the head. And as you can see, I've got to cover it up. On this side, you can see the bead still showing through. So if that happens, I just grab my fibers and just kind of wiggle them back and forth a little bit and that will put them all right in place. So from here, I'm just going to lightly comb out the bruiser to make a minnowish shape because we're gonna put some eyes on this now. But before I do that, I'm gonna do a quick whip finish. All right, so in the past, I have used um, resin to hold the eyes in place permanent or temporarily. But on these, these uh, newer flies, I've actually just been using gel super glue. So if you don't use gel super glue, uh, if you use normal super glue, it will kind of just you know seep into the head and it won't really do any good. I just use this simple Loctite stuff. But before I do that, I can see a, a few little stragglers. So I'm just gonna take a lighter and just hit it real quick. That gets rid of any of those little stragglers and that kind of screws up our resin finish. Then, I'm just going to flatten the head, just find some toothless forceps, and I'm just going to come in here and just give it a quick smash. And what that does is it creates a nice flat surface that I can use to, to stick those eyes to. If it's a round surface, the eyes don't really like to adhere very well. So once I have that, I'm just going to get a tiny little dab of super glue on that side and then another tiny little dab on that side. Mind you, you don't need that super glue to hold the eyes in place permanently. It's just gonna kind of hold it until we can get some resin to cover up the whole thing. So again, I'm using these three mil or eighth inch fluorescent orange eyes. And I'm just gonna stick those in right behind the eye of the hook and just kind of gently place those. If you just pinch them too hard, you, they'll slide and then your fingers get in the super glue and then it's a mess. So that's where we are with those eyes. And they're pretty set. Once I pinch those in place, they set up pretty well. And on this, I'm gonna use Solares uh, medium viscosity. Um, in the past, I'd used multiple different types of resin, you know, a thick and then a, a tack free. This solar res really does the trick. It's super durable. And uh, with one shot, I can just finish the whole fly. So the key here is to put a gob on there and then smooth it out with a bodkin. So shout out to my father-in-law who made me this steezy uh, purple bodkin that matches the purple popsicle. So it's just like a needle on the end of it. So I've got a pretty healthy dollop of resin on here. Um, and I'm just gonna take that resin and push it back off the eye and it will coat the whole eye. And I'm barely gonna have it touch the resin. Then once I get that set, I'm gonna just kind of rotate it like this while I hit it with the infinity light. Wait, no, this is the the plasma light. Dang, this one's a beast. So once I get it all pretty much cured, I'll slow it down and give it even more of a, a gnarly cure. 
All right, don't go anywhere though, because you gotta check out what this looks like wet. Okay, so there we have a head, totally tack free. And the beauty of this is when it gets wet, it, it's awesome. So that's what we look like with the blacked out, what do we call this brig? Is it blacked out? Blacked out, blacked out baby fat minnow. Anyway, tie some. If your fish are eating little small streamers, highly recommend doing this one because it kills fish. I mean, it doesn't kill them. Let's just figuratively say it. It doesn't really kill them. We just torture them a little bit. We poke them in the face. Then we bring them in nice and gently, and then we release them into the water from only a few inches above so that the fish police don't get mad at us. And then we don't kill the fish. They just learn their lesson. Then they go tell their friends that an alien abducted them. Yeah, then they go and tell their friends that an alien, an alien abducted them. Bring them? No, they don't. I have a smile on my face because Brigham and I are laughing about the name of this fly. I will be proper. It's called a booby. It does have big bulbous eyes. However, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the naming of the fly. And we use it on Henry's Lake. Totally slammed them there. So you got to check this video out because this is going to end up in your fly box. All right. So here we have a heavyweight champ in the vise. I'm using two tendon ear thread. And we've got a video on how to use the Apaven, Apavon, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you cut a bunch of foam cylinders out of a foam block. So as you can see, I've cut out a bunch of six and seven millimeter uh, holes out of this. I cut them in half and this is what they look like. So you can see that nasty square or blunt end. I'm gonna show you how to get those perfect. Key here is very sharp scissors, so these these, uh, what are they called, Brigham? Renomed? Renomed? Renomed, I believe. Jeez, I don't know. These scissors are freaking sharp. I love them. This is one with a smooth blade. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come around the side and make kind of a rough cut, knocking down that edge. So I'll do it on the other side real quick. See if I can get that in view for you. This is such a crisp, cutting little scissor, man. All right, so I'm here, got it right here. I'm just gonna touch it with a uh, flame and roll it in my fingers. And boom, here we go. Now there's some debate about, do you tie on the booby eye when, after the fly is tied or you tie it on first? I definitely prefer to tie it on first, but through watching the British guys tie these boobies a lot, I learned a technique that's actually really, really cool. So I'm going to take the eye and I'm going to wrap my thread around the eye like twice. So I can get, you see how I did that? I can make sure that that's perfect. Um, that's, that's about how I want it to sit. Once I have it on the thread, I'm just going to continue to wind and it will kind of seat itself on the hook. You can get a really tight tie-in point here. kind of figure eight or wrap around the base of both of those. So here we have two perfectly set booby eyes ready to roll. Brigham learns stuff every time he watches me tie flies. All right, so this is a fly that we used on a special secret Stillwater in Idaho named Henry's Lake. Did I say a secret? It's not really that secret. Henry's Lake has a reputation for really, really picky, snotty fish that will only eat the exact thing that they've eaten for years and years. Real slim leeches, intermediate lines. We busted out the Euro stuff, not Euro nymphing, but the UK stuff that we've learned over the years, like the, uh, the, the parabolic line. You guys hear me talk about that all the time. Whatever it was about the parabolic line with this booby, and a few calabatus nymphs was magic. So anyway, we're going to pick a real flowy piece of feather. So, all right. So I have pulled all the fibers off of that. I've got it in my hand. And I'm just going to kind of bunch all those together like that. And now I've got a real long piece of marabou that I can use. I like to cut off those butt ends and use that little section to tie it in. 
Now I can tie this in up, up top so it's more, more level, more durable, but I'm gonna take my fingernail and I'm gonna pull out a lot of those marabou fibers that are that are uh, stuck in on the stems. So that's the stuff that I pull off the marabou and that's where I'll tie it in. So I'm going to, let's see if I can get it to work. Do a few loose roots or loops, <laughs> loose roots. It's a word and I'll just wrap it back. Maybe I didn't peel off enough of those fibers, but you get the picture. All right, so when I wrap this back, I'm going to wrap it down the bend a little bit, and that will keep that from fouling quite a bit. It looks really dumb, but it'll keep it from fouling. And I want my tail pretty long on this. And I hear this all the time. Guys will say, well, if, with a long tail like that, my fish short strike. So that won't work. I don't think the fish are short striking. They either have a dull hook point, maybe their fly design's wrong, maybe it's a small fish eating it, but I really don't think the fish are smart enough to know that's a fly, and if I only eat the tail, I won't get the hook. No, they're trying to eat it. So don't don't give me the short strike stuff. This this long tail style of fly has been used for years and years and years and years. Guess what? These fish eat it just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and with my thumbnail, just kind of break off some of those fibers to get it the length that I want. And the rest of the fly is real simple. So this is just FNF Jelly Fritz in blackjack color, just black on black. If you notice the theme here, the blank saver theme, where it's black tail, black body, chartreuse head, I'm just doing that with a booby instead of a bead. So once I'm here, I'll just wrap this forward. So I'm going to turn that. Some people say you want to pack that in real tight, but I like to wrap it just kind of natural natural thickness. Don't want to pack it too tight. Don't want it too loose. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. So trim that off. Now, as you can see, the hook gap is completely gone on this fly. That hook is hidden in the materials which normally would be a very bad thing. But this fritz really slims down in the water. So when you're fishing it, that hook is definitely gonna be able to be uh, ready to poke a fish. So don't worry about that too much. Take my thread up through the eyes now, finish around the eye of the, of the hook, and kind of pull everything out of the way and do a quick whip finish. Anyway, if you haven't watched our videos on fishing parabolic lines, we'll put some links in our in the description below. Um, if you already know about it, you can see why this fly is such a killer. But we use this um, all over the place in different colors as well. So mess with some olive, some orange, some pink. But this one is definitely one of my favorite colors to fish in this booby pattern. Good eye, mate. If you can't tell, I've spent a lot of time in the UK recently. Meaning I spent three days there. I was so jet lagged I wasn't even conscious. But there's a fly I want to show you. It's a cousin of the Jalbach. It's called the Bruiserbach. Yes, Australia, bro. I know, it's Australia. It's a joke. Freak. So I hope you've gone to the comments to let me know that good day mate is actually Austrian and not from the UK. All right. So I know that. Okay. You don't, they say other stuff there. Anyway, so anyway, let's get started on this fly. This is a variation of a Dialbach and the Dialbach is really simple. It just uses peacock curl, hackle, and wire. But I, uh, I tied some up one time using Bruiser Blend Junior as, as a peacock curl substitute and it worked really, really well. So let me just find my stuff and we'll get started. All right, so the tail on this is brown um, hackle fibers. Typically I'll use Coachman Brown dry fly stuff that I have laying around. But this, uh, I'm at, in this uh, fly, I'm using the fiery brown um, strung hackle from Hairline. So I'm just going to get about that many. 
and pluck those off of the stem of the, the hackle. And I'm going to tie in, I don't know, there, there are probably 10 fibers here. But I'll tie those in so that the tail's roughly going to be the same length as the body on this. Make sure those, those sit nice on top of the hook shank. It's going to kind of curve downward just a little bit because this hook has a little bit of a bend like that. And we'll just wrap that using touchy tur touching turns. Touchy turns, touchy dude. Turns. That's like the Davy McPhail of the United States. All right, bro. It's up to yourself, man. Just use some of those touchy turns and it will all turn out all right, man. Touchy turns. Oh, jeez. All right. Sorry, Davey. We love you. We're just messing around. It's Brigham's fault. His name's Brigham Wilson. I can send you his email later. All right. So, red wire. Um, red wire on Stillwater Nymphs is a great choice. Um, this is just some uni soft wire um, in size small. Um, I've really been liking that uni wire lately. But once we're here, this is California 420 color uh, Bruiser Blend. Trust me, that name has been around in the bass circuit for a long time. So I didn't come up with it. Promise. Um, so I just have a, a little dubbing noodle. I can always add more if I need to. And I'm going to start just building up a little bit of a taper on this fly. So as you can see, just by kind of wiggling my thread to where I want it, I have a really nice taper on that little nymph. And then I'm going to reverse wrap the wire. And if I reverse wrap, even though it's just dubbing that I dubbed on there, it, it can add a little bit more durability. So we go all the way to the front. We're going to catch that. And then I just like to bend the wire against the direction where it was last wrapped, bend it back, and then do a quick little helicopter, and it's off. So this is the most challenging part of this fly, and it's actually quite a pain in the butt. It's tying on the beard. So this has like a wet fly style beard. So as you can see, I took my thread, and I took it from right against the eye, and I moved it back. It's just like two to three turns of thread. But when you're tying in the beard, um, if you put it too close to the hook eye, you have these little fuzzy fibers that get in the hook eye. So take your thread, push it all the way back to where it's touching the dubbing, or if you're tying a Dialbach, the real one, um, against the hurl. I call this one the bruiser bach. Right, Brig? Brigham named it, so if you're mad, it's his name. I'll take about the same number of fibers that I took for the tail. I've prepped them, and I'm going to turn the fly upside down and just lay those on its belly, grab with two fingers, do a quick pinch wrap, two to three turns, and then I've got it tied in like that. From here, I can just manipulate the feathers, take my fingernail and, you know, kind of splay it around, make sure that it's nice. I kind of like it to splay out just a little bit like that. So once I have that tied in, I can maybe do one more really securing wrap so when I'm messing with these, it won't pull out. Get some really fine tipped scissors, stick it in there. And now because I had those awesome fine tip Renamed scissors, there's really no butts to be found. And I can just come in here and you know tidy it up. See that rig? Tidy. That's a word I learned over there as I was learning how to be civilized. And then we're just going to give it a quick whip finish. And on this fly, we might as well just go for the full fancy effect here. So I've got, here we go. I've got some resin. And I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit on the thread. And I'll work that into the bottom side. We just want to barely kiss it with the resin. Oh, that's that's something they'd say in freaking Texas or something. But this this dubbing actually has really good, cool UV properties. Um, and Bruiser Blend is a great dubbing for nymphs and dries. So, anyway, there's the Bruiser Bach.
in the California 420 coloration, and it is a Stillwater Crusher. This is an incredible, versatile style of coronamid. Watch this technique that I'm going to use that turns it into a much more versatile style. Okay, new hook alert. This is one of the hooks I've been waiting for for quite a while. I, um, th th you know, in general for still water, coronamids, little leeches, there's not been a super great, really strong, heavy hook, but in smaller than say 10. So Fulling Mill's new lineup of Grab Gape Heavies solves that problem. And they go down to, I can't remember, maybe 18, 16. So anyway, this one here is a great coronamid profile. I like it. it does have a straight shank, a little bit of a downturned eye, but also kind of a progressive bend like you will see with coronamids. They, they are bendy. So this is a more of a style, but the cool part is that we're going to be able to change the colors and make it even more versatile based on just uh, one material change, basically. So I'm going to start off, take the bead back, and I'm going to tie in a very... Uh, small amount of thread to get some breathers. And I'm using my favorite now, I've done breathers and different things, is Glowbrite. Number 16, the fluorescent white. And the way I do it is I'll get a length of this and then I fold it into fours. So I have one length, fold it once, Hold it twice, so now I've basically got four strands going on. And I'll just overlap this over the eye of the hook. I want to keep minimal wraps here. Then we'll go in front of it. A couple of wraps prevent that from going off the front. And then we'll trim and whip finish. One nice thing, and I don't get tired of saying it, these Renamed Scissors are super sharp and super fine. They're good for getting in there close. And here's another thing that I'm gonna show you with these scissors, it's pretty cool. So uh, I've got my breathers, I need to trim them. Actually, let's whip finish first so we avoid a disaster. Okay, nice and minimal, four turn, three turn whip finish. And there we go. Now, to trim these, this Glowbrite can be a squirrely material. It's synthetic, a little slippery. If you don't have good scissors, it won't cut nicely. We do want these to be, because they're breathers and they'll tend to go off on each side, I do want this to be a straight, even cut. But let's say that I trimmed these and one's messed up. This is the, the test of your scissor. If you can cut Glowbrite or like GSP or any other synthetic kind of softer slippery material. If you can cut these with just like that, you come in here and just a, a trim of just that much, boom, that's a fine scissor. That's, that's one of the tests I use for a good sharp scissor is if it can touch, uh, trim small amounts of very fine synthetics. So guess what, Renamed, you passed the test. So we're just gonna push these uh, the bead up on over the top of the breathers and we're going to start in with some thread and I'll go with red thread here and this is actually a fairly simple pattern once we get into it and that's one of the reasons I like this more as a style of pattern is that you can mix this up you could use a bigger bead than this for this uh, hook you could you could go up to a 3.5 even if you wanted something that sinks quicker and then you mix and match the colors because coronamids change color and they are different colors uh, as they progress from larva to pupa to adult. So I'm going to work my thread down and I'll go just as we're into the bend of the hook, kind of like that. And what I'll do is tie in. I've got two things I need to tie in. One is Synthetic peacock quill, that will be the overbody, so that's going to get tied in first. And then we'll have some tinsel. So the way I tie this in, it has an adhesive side. 
I like the adhesive to be towards the fly. So I'll just tie this on my side facing me. Get a good, oops, let me redo that one. So I tie this in with a point like so, and that will help it go around the bend of the hook a little bit better. And again, I want this adhesive side down. So that's what I'm looking for is to get that to go down. A couple wraps don't need much there. And then I want to work my way up about a bead's width from the tie-in point. So we do want the bottom portion of this to show red. And then I'll tie in my tinsel. And this is just uh, Mirage Opal Tinsel. Opal is one of my favorites for coronamids because it really does match the color of the, the pupating coronamids, which becomes real important. And this red thread isn't going to show through too much, but I do want to build up a little bit of taper because these coronamid Pupa do have a, a bit of a taper, but not too much. I still want it to have a thin profile. All right, work my way right up behind the bead. And I typically like to use some hackle pliers or pliers of some sort. Just helps me put enough pressure on this. And then just wrap all the way up. I leave a little tiny bit of space, but not much. We can always go back over that if we need to. All right, now our body quill, or the synthetic quill, First strap you want to pull somewhat tight because you want that to lay down. And then I'm just going to work my way up so that that segmentation is going to pick up the red there at first. And as we work our way up, slightly overlapping wraps with that little black stripe kind of following us up. And if you've got a rotary vise, this is a nice reason to use it. I don't use the cradle, but you could as well if you wanted. Locking wraps in front. Now we're just trimming this off. All right, at this point, we could just whip finish and fish it like that, but that wouldn't be fun. Instead, I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, fluorescing UV clear. You can use whatever UV resin you like. I like this one because it does have some UV reflectance with it that uh, I personally think makes a difference. So, and this is gonna be a very thin coating, and you'll see what I mean by UV reflectance here. It's not, it does not fluoresce. Take off the excess, but if we jam the light on this, you can kind of see those highlights it gives it. Uh, maybe not a big deal, but I think it's cool. And I think it makes a difference. I've had enough times where a fly with this coating on does better than other flies of similar build, but without the coating. Okay, this is almost done, really simple. We're gonna add some orange UV ice tub, one of my favorite dubbings, and this is a tiny, tiny bit. It's just enough to 
add what would be the orange from the wing buds and then just build up a little bit more of a hot spot so it's pronounced there. Red, because these pupa have orange, red, silver, black, and I do two. And that is it. The thing that you can do differently here, if you wanted to get a red version of this, you would simply use red tinsel, and here's an example of one that has the red tinsel. And so that's the only difference. Instead of using the Mirage Opal, you use red tinsel. I like the medium size. And now you've got a red one. So remember with coronamids, you really do need the darker red and blacks. You need uh, silver and blacks. You need reds and silvers. And then especially these with some kind of sparkle to them. And uh, so that's why I say this is a style. It's a, you can use it for a lot of different styles and colors of coronamids. But this is a good one. We'll leave the description in the description below. We're going to leave some uh, links to the materials. You can tie yourself and check us out at flyfishfood.com.